What's up, man? 17 Gamers. My name's Cody, and I want to welcome you to my YouTube channel. In today's video, we're just going to share with you a quick gameplay here, and I hope that uh, some things that come up really help. Uh, I think that this is probably one of the better ways to learn is if you sit, you just watch uh, me play and learn from things that I do well, things that I don't do well. I can review it. I can go over it. Those things, I think, really help uh, for you to be able to see what's going on. So what I want to talk about today, though, and I think you'll see it as this gameplay goes, is this idea of, <coughs> sorry, I've been a little sick lately, this idea of executing under pressure. At the end of the day, all you can do is be the best. You, you can only do your job as good as you can. And so what I, I really want to focus on today is showing you how to stay in your game even though you're playing somebody else. How, how you play an opponent, basically, but you still play your game. And in a sense, it's almost like you're playing yourself. It's almost like every game you play is really against yourself. It's not really against the other team that you're necessarily playing. What it's really against is yourself. Do you do your job as good as you can? And that question really kind of, I think it, 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 sheds, it sheds a lot of light on why uh, certain players are really, really good at the game and certain players aren't really good at the game, even though they have access to the same information. See, this question has baffled me because if you want to look at a player, if you want to go back and watch some of the Madden championships or Madden classics, what you'll see is you'll see a lot of the, a lot of similar things occur. So most people would run cover two with soft squats on the outside and they'll blitz cover and they'll blitz out of that. And, and that's the defense for most people. What's, what's fascinating, though, is that everyone has access to that information, and, but not everyone is that successful with that. So, and, and, and what I'm trying to get you to see here is that it's not necessarily about your playbook. It really isn't. Um, it's, it's, it's about so much more than your playbook. Uh, I'm working right now on a guide, uh, an offensive and defensive guide. Hopefully, we'll have it for you soon. And... What really the premise of the guide is, is basically calm down, simplify, do your job, all those things. What I think it really shows is how a simple offensive scheme and defensive scheme can really be pretty effective um, for the most part. Uh, you know, there's certainly things that I can do better. There's probably plays that I don't even know are good. Um, but I think what I do really well is I just play my game. And I play my game and I play my game and I play my game. And over and over again and over the course of time, what ends up happening is I can normally get one or two mistakes caused because they're so focused on trying to play against me instead of just playing their game. Uh, again, this is part of the reason why I don't think it's I don't think you should go nickel. This is I mean I don't think you should go to match formations. I I use one nickel package, and the only reason I use it is is really just because it has a little bit better pressure uh, when I really want to send pressure I can use this package that's really the only reason I use it to be honest everything else you know is, is pretty much four three under I stay in the same formation I, I do very similar things very subtle little tweaks here and there I don't bat I don't match you if you come out in goal line I'm still coming out in four three under if you come out in um, you know five wide I'm still gonna come out in four three under and I think it helps me. I think it really does. I think it helps uh, with some of the different things that I try to do uh, on the defensive side of the ball. Now, definitely there are certain areas where I don't do as well as other players, but I don't think it's about that really. This game is very simple. I mean, if you really think about it, he has to score more than me to win, and I have to score more than him. But what it really means, it comes down to, and you simplify it down to a play-by-play -play basis, what really needs to happen is I need to do my job every play. My job every play changes because I'm essentially the coach. But what it really comes down to is I need to make sure that the play that I call, I have a good purpose for why do I call the play, okay? And secondly, uh, I have clear expectations of what am I trying to accomplish with calling this play. Why do I call this play? But not only why do I call it, what what is the what is like the end result? What what are the two to three things that could possibly happen? And you, you have that checks and balances system with it with it. So like at the five yard line, 
my defense should basically be the same whether I'm playing um, somebody that – whether I'm playing somebody that's uh, running five wide or two wide. It really shouldn't change in my opinion because – it's about the field coverage. Like you can only attack so many areas of the field. At five yard line, you can't attack up top. You can try, but it ain't gonna work. Okay. So what I like to do uh, when we're running something like this is is I'll run cover four, put flats on the outside, have a quarterback spy underneath. If he starts to roll out, I'll I'll click that stick in. As you see right there, we executed it fairly well. Now we now we really in essence, I mean he he was driving up the field on us. We're able to get off the field doing what I believe is the most important thing you can do. As a defense, it's all about limiting big plays and making them take field goals. To me, there's no other. You're not going to dominate because that's not your role. Your defense is not supposed to be offense, right? Defense is supposed to be defense, okay? And so our job is very simple. We just try to make sure that depending on where we're at on the field and what we've been establishing, that should determine then what are we going to do now. Now that he's used to me taking away the, the, the immediate streaks and it's a key third down, now I take away the flats and he either throws an interception or we get a bat down or whatever it may be. And to me, it's the same thing on offense. Um, it's very similar, right? Uh, I run one formation. I don't really do a whole lot else. I really don't. I run the shotgun bunch. I've been flirting with trying to maybe change playbooks to Green Bay, but I, I normally use Pittsburgh. So, like today, I'm going to use Pittsburgh. So, that's the formation. And what I'm literally going to do is I mean, this guy's coming out. I think this is a, looks like a 3 4, some type of set like that. I threw an interception. That's foolish. Foolish throw. I don't know what I was thinking there. But I'm just going to do this over and over again. And you know the defense that gives me the hardest time is probably the cover two with a hard flat. That's probably the hardest. Or not a hard flat, but a soft squat. That's probably the hardest defense I'll face. But I know that going into it, number one. Number two. I can confuse you with my offense because you never know what I'm going to call. I can call PA post. I can call Z spot. I can call. But the thing about it is I call them with enough regularity that it actually matters. Not I go to five wide and call stick. And I try to stay out of that um, because I just don't think it, it really helps. I don't think it helps. As a play caller, you have no filter. You, your hope, you need to filter. Why do you need a filter? Because it helps you with your decision making. If you don't have a filter through which to see your plays, I'll tell you this right now. If you do not have a filter through which you look at your play calling, you will call the same exact play. You will call the same exact play from multiple formations and actually never do anything. You will call PA post from five different looks. But in essence, you're still running the same thing. So for me, I don't want to do that. And it's pretty much that simple. That's that's why I don't I don't do that. I mean, so I use a filter, and I look at a play, and what I see in a play is normally not what other people see. Other people see you're in trips to the right or left. What I see is your routes. Where are you going? And for me, it normally works out pretty well. Um, as you saw earlier, I make mistakes from time to time, but. It's, it, it, in essence, it's, it's now on my shoulders. That's the thing. That's the beauty of this offense is it's my responsibility because I know it so well. Whereas if I'm just picking random plays for no reason, I can just say, well, I got unlucky. I can't say that with this offense. I made the mistake. I've seen that defense that guy ran. That defense that the guy ran when you when I threw the interception, I've seen that defense a million times. It was cover two. I've seen it a million times. So the mistake was my fault. And then it just works like that. I mean, it just, to me, that's what it's all about. So 
Anyways, enough about that. So this guy's running. I think he's running some. That's weird. I think it's Dollar maybe, or I don't really know. This is. I haven't seen this formation. Um, I think what he's running is some type of maybe Dollar or Quarter formation. And what he's doing though is what everybody does: cover two, drop. I mean, that's his. That's his bread and butter for sure. So the key to beating cover two drop, in my opinion, is to have uh, multiple points which you attack. And that was a good call. I think he mixed that up. He went to cover six. Yep, cover four maybe. Okay. But you can... I mean, this is easy for me. Like, when you look at it, so he's got corners are pressed up. The one on the left side is off coverage. It probably means man. So that's, you know, I know that I want to hit that C route on the far right. Unfortunately, there, Mel Blunt made a really good play on it. And that's, I got to tip my hat to him. Normally, normally that C route is open at that point. That's just part of the game. Sometimes things happen that you didn't plan for. So it looks like it's probably the same exact coverage. He had success with it once. Why not try it again? And there's a beautiful play there. So there I waited instead of threw it. Uh, I actually changed it up into a really weird coverage I've never seen. I think that's some kind of cover three Mabel. Um, but anyway. Um, also, one thing I want to point out there. Uh, something that I think would really help a lot of people is when you're passing the ball and what you used to do um, – wow, that was a terrible read. What you used to do as like aggressive catches, I would recommend now using predominantly possession catch. I think possession catch is the way to go. Um, I think it's such a, a pivotal uh, – I really do. I think it's a pivotal shift because for me, like you don't think about it, but I really do think it matters. It means a lot. There's Derrick Henry being a stud. Bailed me out of a bad read. Down in the red zone, everything gets harder. Um, just the way it is. Uh, what I like to do, there's a couple things. I have this play right here. This play is Z-Spot. And it's pretty simple. Uh, what I like to do with it, it's really a couple things. I want to take that tight end. I really want to make him matter in this play. See if we got everything right here. Looks like it. Where I'm really trying to hit is high pass lead. Didn't work there. Worked in my last game though. High pass lead to the left. If that if that doesn't seem to be working, I got another play where X comes across. So it's just two different options. The cool part about the Z spot, in my opinion, there's a couple things that are neat. The best thing for me is it's it's basically literally just a just an inverse of the other plays. And you go into right, you're going to your receiver on the right instead of your receiver on the left. So again, that's the mentality that I'm in. I want to be able to attack the entire field and I want to do it in a way where basically on one play, everyone's going to go to the right. On the other play, everybody's going to go to a different way. And they're still going to attack the same different points of the field. But the individual receivers are going to be doing it at different points. To me, that is a big deal. Um, to some people, it doesn't really matter. Um, to those people, I think they're dumb. We'll call a timeout here because we got all jumbled up. And we don't really need a two-point version anyway. Should have just taken a delay game. I was going to show you that other two-point conversion play, but you've probably already seen it. High point pass leads are really effective, but what I think is even more effective than the high point pass lead is the possession catch. If you can work on that, um, I would be interested to see people, if you guys want to go into practice mode and check this out, basically try to use or catch in whatever it may be, whether it's post routes, whether it's out routes, whatever you think is worth trying to use or catch. I don't really care. But instead of using, instead of using the aggressive, use the possession catch. But put them in a situation where they like actually have to jump. It'd be interesting. Uh, I think it'd be really interesting to see what you guys found. 
interception. Oh my gosh, we had him. Here's what my philosophy is. Your job is to do your job. The offense's job is to do their job. If everybody did their job perfectly, it would be a tie ball game. It would be a tie ball game. The only way you're going to win games. <coughs> Here's how games are decided, in my opinion. The other team is going to make a mistake. You're probably going to make mistakes, too. Okay. The key is that you don't make as many mistakes as they do. If you can do that, I believe that everything else is going to take care of itself. For example, right there uh, on the first of that drive, he called a play that basically I won. I, I got what I wanted, right? I got him to throw a ball into coverage because he wasn't okay with taking his check down read, even though the check down read was wide open, right? But for whatever reason, my guy dropped the interception. Okay, there he makes a good catch. That's okay, no big deal. You just keep chipping away. You know, you just keep kind of relentlessly pursuing your job over and over and over again. And you just keep you just keep pushing. You just keep pushing away because there's nothing else for you to do. There's really not. I mean, you think about it. There's really not. Here we're going to change it up. We go to cover three. He, he's going to take a chance there, go up, go up top. We get an interception. Now we got a chance to run it out. That was probably dumb. We shouldn't have ran it out. <coughs> kind of puts us in a predicament here. That's where I need to be more well. So, so that's a mistake on me, right? Like right there. Eight seconds. I, I should have known. I don't have enough time. I don't have timeouts. There's no real reason for me to take the ball out of the end zone. But I did. That's part of it. I made a mistake. But as you can see there, I mean, we've been – Cover two, cover two, cover two. Push comes to shove. We take away cover two. Then we'll take a timeout. We'll throw a bomb up here. What I like to do in this situation, there's a couple things. So one of the things I really want to accomplish, there's a couple things you can accomplish in situations like this. Most people don't think like that, in my opinion. What they try to do is they try to figure out, well, how can I score a touchdown in three seconds? To me, that's not the question. To me, the question is, what can I show? So like right there, I know I'm going to throw it away, more than likely. What do I want to throw it away at? You know, and that's a question for another day. What I want to do is I want to show another look. So like maybe a play that I'm not going to use a whole lot, I'll show right there just to show him so that it's in the back of his mind. Like, oh, he's got this play. Oh, he's got that play. Oh, he's got this opportunity. Using those opportunities, I think, really helps you uh, because what happens is over the course of time, people start to become – they start thinking like, well, if I call this play, that's going to leave this open and this open and this open. and become Because eventually, what, what in a perfect world, we would call Z-spot and PA post and no other play. Like that's, that would be pretty much what we would call. But the way the game works, for me anyways, from what I'm seeing, the way the game works is – People will hesitate to call plays because of your counter. And so they'll sit in random plays that they may not necessarily want to be in, but works works good enough to kind of keep them out of the doghouse. Like, like for example, it's like calling prevent. It's like calling a prevent defense even though he's running all short routes. Why are you calling a prevent defense? Because he called a streak one time and it scared the crap out of you. That's why you're calling a prevent. So just kind of something to consider for me anyways. I think it definitely can help. There's Fitz wide open over the middle. Starting to run a little cross man on that PA post, as you can see. That's part of the reason why I like this offense. Because when you try to stop PA post, you cannot stop Z spot. And if you try to if you try to just stay fundamentally sound, then I will still beat you because PA post is a really, really phenomenal play. Especially when you have the reads down. The reads are what make the play special. It's not, it's, it's not the routes, if that makes any sense. The ability to read the defense and do those things, that's what makes the PA post such a tough play to stop. That's what makes everything I do, in my opinion, such a tough thing to go against. Well, it's what makes me as good of a player as I, I try to be is not because I'm great, not because I'm perfect, but because when I'm doing my job, as a quarterback, making the proper decision, 
I have a, a route for every area of the field. What that does, in my opinion, is it forces people, it forces people to really have to kind of figure out what are they going to take away. Because it's not about them stopping me. They can't. They can't stop me. In theory, if I do everything on my part, they should not be able to stop me. That's how offense works, right? You shouldn't be able to beat me. I'm doing everything that I can do. But here's how they stop me. I make a mistake. Or poor play calling. Make mistake. You can make many, many kinds of mistakes. You can make physical mistakes where you throw an interception. Mental mistakes where you don't call the right play at the right time. You, or where you miss a read because you're under pressure. Like Those are three big types of mistakes that you can make. For me, the key is is not doing that, not making those mistakes. There I get really bailed out by a fumble, uh, by a recovery from Rodgers. He ends up picking the first down up. That's that's luck. That's not, that's not me at all, okay? But think about it. He got lucky earlier on in the game too, okay? So it's not like completely one-sided. And there's an interception. That was a poor read. That was a poor read. I just forced that one. Just totally forced that one right there. That was a good defense. Poor read there. You see, I make mistakes. Now, key to uh, – no, second thing I want to talk about. So, I think we've kind of a, a beat like a dead horse this idea of basically trying to limit your mistakes, right? What I want to talk about now is what do you do when you make a mistake? What do you do? How, how do you – because you're gonna mistakes are gonna happen. They're just gonna happen. So the question is, what do you do? What do you do when mistakes come your way? What do you do? What I'm gonna say, I think is very simple to hear, but it's very difficult to do. You keep walking and you and you do the best you can with the hand that you now have, right? In position. It's like when you're playing poker. All you can do is play the hand. You can't change the cards you were dealt. Um, and so just something interesting, I think, to really kind of consider is for a moment, I want you to think about this when you're playing this game. This game is very simple, but what happens is our emotions get in the way. We know what to do. We know the plays to call. We, we have our, mon our money plays. We know what to do, okay? The problem is not knowledge. The problem is not what well, not. I don't even think the problem is execution. We can do it in practice mode all day. What we have trouble doing is doing it under pressure, and pressure comes in very many different types, shapes, sizes. There are different types of pressure. The, the pressure I want to talk about is pressure that comes from within us. I think all pressure comes from within us because what we do is we let it in. We let pressure from the outside inside us. Because if you think about pressure. If, for example, if you're blitzing me, the only the only way it can get to me is if, if I let it in, if I let the blitz come in, okay? To me, that's important. Why? Because it means that we can control pressure. We can control pressure in the sense that we cannot let it affect us. How do we do that? For example, in the game, in this game right here, it's three to seven. I've made a couple of really big errors and I'm actually still winning but not where I want to be by any means right but I and and the clock is ticking right it's two minutes left in the game you know that that's a big deal to me okay with only two minutes that limits my options now like things that I could have done before I can't do anymore like that's Certainly in my in the back of my head, but what's in the front of my mind is a four point lead. It's a four point ball game. Okay. What I see is opportunity here. This is an opportunity. This is what most people don't want to want to hear, but I think it's really important because it's so simple, but it's so ap applicable. It's seven to three with two minutes left in the game. There is opportunity. Okay. There is a huge, huge opportunity right here. What's the opportunity? Well, my defense can get a stop. Why do I think why do I think we see it the wrong way? I think we see it the wrong way because we're so focused on not screwing up. That's where we're that's where our focus is. 
right? We're like, oh no, oh no, oh no, he's going to score. Oh no, he's going to score. And then what does he do? He scores, right? To me, I would much rather, I would much rather be in this situation and say this. All right, let's go defense. What do we got to do to stop him? What do we got to do to stop him? What do we got to do to stop him? What do we got to do? 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 And ask that question over and over and over and over and over again. And now I'm fueled with opportunity and information. Third and four comes out five wide receiver set. In this situation, what do you call? Well, in my opinion, here's what we're going to do. We're going to we're going to cross man. And we got him. Third and four. I think he got I maybe got the first down. Fourth and inches situation. We'll save a timeout. So probably shouldn't have even called those timeouts if I'm completely honest. It's probably it probably wasn't the best call uh, on my behalf. Let's see what he does here. Be real careful in these inches situations. Let's see what he does here. Maybe we can get him to take a timeout. I think we got him. Did we get him? Nope, he got the first somehow. All right, so here we go. Down the wire. He's got all three timeouts, which means running the ball is an opportunity. What we do right here, what I've always done, is I call. Cover four. There we are. We got him. We'll call a timeout right there. So I, again, guys, this is opportunity. It's not. It's not obligation. It's not time for excuses. How am I going to win this game? Well, I got to play the down. Second and goal. What do I do? Come out. Cover four. He had trouble beating it before. We'll see what he does here. Now we got him in the backfield again. Now he's in a situation. Okay, so now you've got third down. And what has he done all game? He runs a, a crossing route, cross, multiple crossing routes. Okay. And what and what else? He runs a, a deep post with a corner. Cover four, exactly the way I just described it, shuts that stuff down cold. He's running out of time, too, when you think about it. Well, what's he doing here? Now he's going to have to burn a timeout because he doesn't know what to do. Now he's got 13 seconds. And this is what I'm talking about, pressure. Pressure, 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 pressure. Under this pressure, now he's in a situation where he's got his back against the wall. Now what do we call on defense? Well, we change it up a little bit, okay? What we're going to do now is we're going to call cover two, okay? Back to the roots. There we go. There's corner routes. There's an interception, and that's the ball game. What I want to stress to you guys real quickly, it's, it's only pressure if you let it become pressure. It's only pressure if you let it become pressure. Pressure creates opportunity. Okay? What we did right there, we had an opportunity. Things went wrong, but now we're placed in a situation where you have to respond. The way you respond is always you answer the call of duty, you come up to pressure, and you make plays.